Hello all my wonderful YouTube people. Today I thought that I would make a video that is requested and that is what it's like to have quiet BPD. Now, if you have been following along for the past year or so, you will know that I have already made a video talking about living with BPD, which I will just link above here. If you haven't watched it, I would highly recommend you to do so. But I figured that because in the video, I wasn't talking specifically about living with quiet BPD, and then I know that a lot of you within this community struggle with quiet BPD. I get a lot of questions about it. I get a lot of questions about how to know if you actually have it. I also get a lot of comments of people relating to my experience with the symptoms that are more specific to quiet BPD. And so why not take a moment to talk about it? So as we know, there exist four unofficial subtypes to BPD, quiet borderline, also known as high functioning borderline or BPD being one of them. And this is known as a more internalizing subtype, meaning that the symptoms are experienced internally. So there's a lot of self-directed blame, self-directed anger, rather than the typical angry outbursts that people associate with BPD. Firstly, the thing that I find really difficult about having quiet BPD is that people do not see the way that I experience life internally. While this is normal because we can't read people's minds, sometimes when individuals have other disorders or other versions of BPD and the way that symptoms present themselves, it's easy for outsiders to kind of look at the person and understand, okay, wow, they're suffering, they're having angry outbursts and they're self-harming and we're seeing all of these symptoms which are very much in your face, whereas with me, it's all internal. And because especially my symptoms don't really come out unless I'm in a romantic relationship, my friends, my family, my coworkers, they don't see me as this person who is suffering. They don't see me as this person who is very self-blaming, who blames herself for everything, who is angry at herself all the time, who's very anxious, who's very insecure, who's terrified of abandonment because that's not the way that my symptoms present themselves with others. It's really only within those romantic relationships that things come out. And once again, it's important to know that Yes, although I do identify more with quiet BPD, I'm also different in the sense that I don't have those symptoms with everyone. It's really just with my partners that I experience that. Some of you might have quiet BPD, but you experience those things with your friends and your family and your coworkers. No one can really see those things except for me and people who are really, really close to me in my life. I think with quiet BPD, I also have this tendency to bottle everything up inside. This is the way that I have been since I was little, both because of my temperament as a kid who was very sensitive and very anxious, paired with the circumstances of my life, which made me feel as though there was no space for my emotions and there was no space for me. Also paired with the modeling that I received from my parents and my surroundings that the best thing to do was just to keep everything inside and be strong and deal with your emotions and repress them. And so with now my quiet BPD, I do have this tendency to experience suffering and depression and anxiety and not talk about those things. And what that results into is me putting up walls with other people, having a really hard time letting others into my life because I'm so scared of being rejected. I'm so scared of being seen for who I truly am because I was taught for so long that being vulnerable was a bad thing and that having strong and dysregulated emotions was negative. And so it's better just to present myself as this perfect version of me to the world and hope that people fall in love with this version. The problem with that is that it's impossible to maintain. It's impossible to maintain this perfect you all the time who's always supportive and attentive and happy and laughs a lot. As soon as I bottle things up for too long, it's like the analogy of holding a ball, a beach ball underwater. At some point it's going to pop back up and you're going to be so tired from trying to hold it down that it's impossible to put back in. And this is kind of what it feels like to have quiet BPD is 
we direct so much hate and anger towards ourselves and we take on so much from other people. I think that being an empath kind of also goes with this quiet BPD almost hand in hand because there's this tendency to avoid our own emotions and also present ourselves as perfect and be this protector and savior for everyone else that we just end up taking, 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 taking so much weight from other people. And then on top of our own suffering, it's really, really exhausting and it's difficult to live this way. The people pleasing is definitely another big one with quiet BPD. So once again, because there's this tendency to feel inadequate, to feel as though people will not love you and stay with you unless you are the best version of yourself all the time, people pleasing then happens almost naturally. For me, I know that it's definitely much better, but I used to be a yes person and say yes to everything all the time at the detriment of my own mental well-being. And what would happen is that I would burn out and I would end up resenting people for seemingly doing these things to me and taking advantage of me and always putting too much on me. And while sometimes it's true that people do see us who are so caring and willing to be there as someone to be taken advantage of, there's also this tendency to do that to ourselves with quiet BPD. It's, we want to be loved so badly that we will always put ourselves second. And there, it's important to realize that you're doing that. It's important to realize for yourself so that you can stop, but so that you can also stop resenting other people because it's not everyone who's out to get you. It's not everyone who's out to take advantage of you. And so developing the self-awareness of your patterns of why you're doing these things, what's the core cause? It's probably because you're, you feel inadequate and you don't feel fundamentally like you're good enough to be loved for just being you. Once we can recognize that, we can start to rectify those patterns and start to heal not only our relationship with ourselves, but our relationship with others and kind of break this cycle and this, these patterns that we have established in our lives. Because with BPD, we do have this fear of abandonment, which is really probably the biggest driving factor behind most of the symptoms, right? Where we see the self-harm, we see being impulsive, we see the dysregulated moods, we see the identity disturbances, the dissociation. It's all mechanisms to help us cope with this fundamental fear of being left, of being rejected by others. And so with quiet BPD, some of the symptoms that we do see highlighted, like I mentioned, is the people pleasing, it's bottling things up inside, it's blaming yourself for everything. That's another big one for me. It's easier for me to blame myself for everything and avoid conflicts because it's like I tell myself, well, if I just avoid those conflicts, people are going to stick around. And if I can just be the bad person in my relationships, that everything is always my fault. Well, it serves a dual function in the sense that if I take the blame for everything, well, then maybe the person is going to stay longer with me because they can take advantage of me. But at the same time, it also serves the function that when we self blame all the time, if people actually do end up leaving us, we can say, oh, well, see, it is my fault. I have been the one causing the problems this entire time in my relationships and they left and it's because of me, which feeds into the narrative of being not good enough and believing that we are the reason that people cannot stay with us. And this is a very dangerous cycle, dangerous pattern and thought process that comes along with ha having BPD in general, and then more specifically, the quiet BPD, because it's so internal. It's so, everything is just kept inside and there's really no outlet to it. It's really, it's really challenging. Sometimes it can feel very alienating and lonely 
because people don't get it. Like I said, people don't see you for the turmoil that you are inside, for the chaos that's always going on. And it's like you need to fight with your instincts every single day to be quote normal in society and function. And we, we tend to overcompensate the high functioning. It's a mask for this storm and chaos that's going on inside of you and I see a lot of people with quiet BPD myself included that there's this overcompensation with being perfectionist and placing all of our value of our worth on external circumstances I know for me that's a huge thing that I always do it's I try so hard to be the best at everything to be the best at school, to be the best at my work, to be loved and accepted by everyone, to seem like I'm intelligent or I'm hardworking so that people can love me and praise me and accept me because I don't think that if I just show up for my raw vulnerable self and all of my emotions, good and bad, that people are going to love me. And so I overcompensate and I am a high achiever and I overdo it. A lot of that is coming from a really bad and a really sad place of just wanting so desperately to be loved and accepted that I do all the things. And it's positive in the sense that it, it has really shaped me and forced me to make something out of myself today. But a lot of the time it can be really exhausting because with that it's it's this feeling of never feeling satisfied because even when you achieve those things, you're achieving them to get praise from other people. And when the praise goes away and you're back to feeling lonely and scared and that you're not good enough, you're going to achieve and reach for the next big thing. And it's this endless cycle of chasing, 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 chasing. It seems like you're chasing these external goals, but deep down you're just chasing the stability of knowing that people are not going to leave you, that people really love you. And when you put it that way, I think that's a way that people can understand how exhausting it is. And so I hope that that helps to kind of clarify the experience of having quiet BPD, it's really hard to put into words and summarize in a few minutes what it's like to live with this disorder. I just know that the main takeaways, if you took anything away today from my ramble, <clears throat> would be that it's very lonely to have quiet BPD and it's very exhausting to have it. And so if you can share your experience with others, you might be surprised to see that there's a lot of people who probably feel the way that you do. And even if they don't necessarily have quiet BPD, I think the experience of being scared of being left, of blaming yourselves, of being insecure, are common human experiences. And so that I have found that sharing my suffering, whether through this YouTube, which has allowed me to have open and honest conversations with my friends and my family in real life has been very healing to me and is, it has allowed me to take some of this weight off of myself and not to hold everything inside so that I could finally start to learn that I'm worthy of taking up space and that I'm worthy of being listened to and that people care about me and that I don't need to win a Nobel Prize to be loved in my life and for people not to leave me. On that note, I really hope that this video was at least somewhat useful to help you start thinking about your own life, your own experiences with the symptoms and traits of BPD. And I hope that this helped you to make you feel less alone. Please know that, yes, although I have done my fair share of therapy and I'm still going to therapy and working on myself, I still feel lonely sometimes and feel like it's hard for people to understand kind of my day-to-day -day experience. And so please know that when you feel lonely, 
I am here and we are going through this together. On that note, I wish you all a wonderful, beautiful week. Thank you for taking the time out of your day for yourself and to be here with me. And on that note, I will see you next week for another episode of On The Line.